Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Chopping It Up with Rommel. Well, I appreciate you guys tuning in and I hope you guys had a good weekend. But what a weekend it was in sports, man. We talked about the Saturday action. Now it's time to talk about the Sunday action. Hey, once again, for you guys out there that's following me, you can always go to YouTube.com and check me out at Troy Rommel Royal. Just search me. You'll see all my videos. Just click them on. Or you can go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash chopping it up with Ron Mel. Listen, I'm going to get right to it, man. What a day it was yesterday in the NFL. Lots of games to talk about. Lots of big games. Playoff picture getting cloudier and cloudier, man. I, it really is, man. It's getting cloudier and cloudier. Uh, what you have, let's start off with Kansas City. Remember, Kansas City had knocked off Oakland on that Thursday night to take uh, a, a uh, take a lead in the division. But uh, on a last-second field goal, uh, Tennessee upsets Kansas City. And now Kansas City is the fifth seed as Oakland wins and takes over the first place in that division. And so now Oakland has clinched the playoff spot first time in 13 years. So now Oakland has the first place, and it looks like they got a grip on that right now. So now they're first place out west. Kansas City has a second, uh, has the first wild card, and Miami has a second wild card. So it, it, it's, it's, it's getting more and more interesting because a, a win could put you in a different position, a loss can put you in a different position. So you got you got to be careful this time. Every game is crucial, and every game counts, man. I mean, Kansas City, uh, you go figure, you would think that this would be an easy win for them against Tennessee. And, you know, Tennessee is playing for something. In fact, this win has now put Tennessee in a tie with with Houston for the division, who Houston won today as well. And we'll talk about that later in the show. But, yeah, so now they're tied with them. And here's the thing. Houston has the division lead, even though they're tied. And I, I believe it might be... It may be over head to head, number one, but also they're five and zero oh in the division. So it's important that Tennessee do not tie Houston because if they tie Houston at one and three in the division, these guys are five and zero. Oh, I don't see them. I don't see them getting in, and a wild card is not in reach. Well, it is in reach. They both are eight and six, I believe it is. Uh, they can go ten and six, but they would need for Miami or Kansas City. To fall flat on their face. So a lot of good football games to talk about. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, getting back to uh, Oakland. Oakland won their matchup today. So that was huge. Uh, they they jump in the first place. Derek Carr gets back on the winning ways. Um, very, very big game there against San Diego. Uh, you know, I've never been a big fan of Phillip Rivers, man. I, I think Phillip Rivers has a talent to do very well in this league. Many people have him as a top 10 quarterback. You know, he has top 10 talent. Don't get me wrong. But has he had a top 10 career? What has he done? Has he gone to the playoffs? And and he has this, he's in this awkward position because on draft day, he was traded from the Giants to San Diego for Eli Manning. And then they chose not to re-sign Drew Brees to make room for him. And what has happened? Drew, B Drew Brees has won a Super Bowl. And uh, Eli Manning has won too. But he hasn't won nothing. So the guy that he pushed out and the guy that they, he got traded for, they went and he hasn't. I wonder how that's going to hurt him or haunt him for his career. It's just an interesting tidbit. But anyway, Oakland goes ahead. They win in San Diego. A huge Oakland presence out there as far as fans. And they reclaim that first spot in the West. 
Staying out west, Denver had a chance to keep their playoff hopes alive. I think they're hanging on thin ropes right now as as they lost to New England and Denver at home today. I mean, again, it, it wasn't one of Brady's special games, but the team was efficient enough. The running back, he helped out. Uh, I mean, I think he broke Curtis Martin's record of the most touchdowns by a running back in Patriots history in a single season. Uh, I think he has 15. Uh, it was really a defensive effort as they shut down uh, Trevor Simeon and them. Uh, this one is going to hurt. I, I don't think Denver can re, re, uh, bounce back from this. I, I don't think they can bounce back from this. I think Denver uh, is, is gone fishing for the season. At 8-6 and six, with two games left, Kansas City and Oakland. And remember, Kansas City and Oakland, they're fighting. It's not like they're going to rest anybody. They're fighting. Oakland is looking to secure home field advantage throughout throughout the playoffs. Uh, uh, so they're going to be motivated and, and, and looking to win that. They're going up against uh, uh, the Patriots for that for that uh, honor. They don't, they don't play one another, but they, they're they battling them in that sense. So I don't look for them to let up. Kansas City would love to be uh, uh, the number two seed, if, if anything, opposed to the number five seed. So I think Denver has their hands full, man. And and their offense, believe it or not, I I just I, I don't know what to make of their offense anymore. You know, uh, it it just doesn't seem to be clicking on all cylinders. Defense is still there. Don't get me wrong, but the offense is it's not it's it's not that good. It can't win games for them. You know, so uh, you got that going on. And then there was Pittsburgh today. Pittsburgh needed six field goals and a touchdown to get the win over Cincinnati. You've heard me say this time after time after time after time. Cincinnati has to be the number one disappointing team in the league. I don't see how Marvin Lewis uh, survives this season. Uh, uh, I, I think he's a, he's, he's a casualty at the end of the season, uh, unless he has pitches, I mean, or, or secrets. I mean, because I, I don't know how he, he, he holds on to his job. I'm sorry. I, I mean, it's not that I want to see the guy fired or anything like that. I just simply don't see how he keeps this job. I don't. It's the biggest disappointment out there. I mean, this game, Pittsburgh, again, it was moving the ball, getting in the field goal range, uh, and that's what they was doing. They kicked six field goals before they finally got a touchdown. But you know what? Persistence always kills resistance. You keep knocking on the door, knocking on the door, either one or two things is going to happen. Either the door opens up or you just knock down the door. Plain and simple, they knock down the door, they got in, they secured a win. Right now, they sit at the top of their division. And Baltimore, breathing down their neck, they got a win. Looks like Philly gift wrapped this one. I mean, Philly scores in the closing closing minutes, final minute, and, and uh, instead of closing seconds, I should say. Instead of going for the field goal to tie and send it into overtime, Philly goes for the two-point conversion, fails on the attempt. Baltimore gets the one-point win. So they stay a game behind Pittsburgh and still active for a playoff spot. So a lot of football to be played in these last two games, man. That's you know still a lot of, a lot of playoff spots up for grabs. And uh, just, just a lot to talk about. Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, he gets back into the winning ways once again uh, as they beat Chicago to keep their playoff hopes alive out there. Uh, with with te- um, I'm sorry, with Detroit losing to the Giants. And, and speaking of that game, what a grab by Odell Beckham and, uh, to, to reach out, grab the football, secure it, and get into the end zone. What a play. Guys, I'm telling you now. I know there's Antonio Brown out there. I know there's DeAndre Hopkins out there. I know there's Julio Jones out there. I know there's Amari Cooper out there. I, I know uh, you got A.J. Green out there. If I'm picking a wide receiver for my first wide receiver, oh, I'm going with Odell. No doubt about it, man. I'm going with Odell. And let me tell you why. Odell does a couple of things. First of all, he doesn't drop passes. All right. Once you catch one, it's hard to catch him. All right. Yeah, he's a little hot up here, but you know what? What that is is here. It's passion. It's passion. 
He wants to win. He wants to be the best. He gets upset when it doesn't work. He's got passion. Do it need to be toned down a little bit? Sure. But he got passion. And then what I like most of all, man, is, is that he frustrates a defense, man. He really does. He frustrates a defense. You know, this is my number one receiver. He may not be the best in the game because it's very debatable. There's some good guys out there. Julio, Antonio Brown, A.J. Green, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. You know, there's some good wide receivers out there, man. But I'm going with Odell Beckham, man. He, he, he gets the victory for the Giants over Detroit. And, and remember, Detroit was reeling, man. I mean, it was rolling. They was really rolling, man. I mean, I, I had uh, Matthew Stafford up there as a, a number three candidate for MVP. With this performance, he might slide down a little bit. Same thing with Brady. Brady was number one last week for me. He may slide down. So there's a couple of things. That's going on. So Detroit loses. Green Bay wins. Green Bay is now a game behind Detroit. So that gets interesting now. That really becomes interesting. Detroit don't have any margin for error. They need to be concentrating on winning out. They need to concentrate on winning out because that's Green Bay's motive. When Green Bay went to the Super Bowl that year and won, it was kind of like a run like this. There was a wild card team. Uh, Aaron Rodgers got on a roll. And the next thing you look up, they was on the playoff. They was on the road. They was winning games. And by the time the Super Bowl came, confidence was through the roof. Just that simple. Just that simple. And, and I'm seeing something similar. A couple of weeks ago, I was hard on Green Bay. I thought that the run between Rod, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy has come to an end. I was calling for Mike McCarthy's head. But since then, they've gone on a roll, and, and they're relevant again in a big way. They're relevant. And with Minnesota going down the way they did, because I believe they lost to Indianapolis today, they just jumped over them. So the only thing in sight now is Detroit. Detroit is 9-5. and five, Minnesota's 8-6. and six. So the playoffs are heating up. And then you got Atlanta. Yeah, they had two cream puffs in a row. Los Angeles, and San Francisco. But uh, at the end of the day, Matt Ryan got the job done. And that's very important. Matt Ryan got the job done. And uh, you got to look for that. Matt Ryan. And, and, and the thing about that with Matt Ryan that I think is very impressive is that, again, this is another week without Julio Jones. And he put up 41 points. 41 points. Think about that for a second. Back-to-back 41 points. Without your star receiver, a, a, a person that, that you can refer to as maybe the best in the game. So Matt Ryan is continuing his, his march towards that MVP. Uh, I think he is a top five candidate, uh, uh, at least right there knocking on the door. I, I, I was watching a game tonight, the Dallas game, and we will talk about Dallas. Uh, I was watching the game with a couple of fellas tonight, and I was saying if there's one team that Dallas should be uh, uh, have some fear of is Atlanta Falcons, and only because Dallas defense is not strong enough to shut down Atlanta's offense. The question is, is this. Can they keep them under 24 points? Because... They're good for 24. They're going to be good for 24. If they can keep them under there. And if they don't, will Dallas have enough offense to keep up with them? Play calling will be really at his best by Jason Garrett and his staff by keeping Atlanta's offense off the field. So with that said, Atlanta wins. Uh, they keep their momentum, keep their pace. Uh, they caught a break tonight when Tampa Bay faced Dallas. Tampa Bay goes into Dallas. It was a good game. It was a good game. A real good game. It's just that, you know, sometimes in these games that are good like this, there's a loser. And in this case here, the loser was Dallas. The loser, I mean, the loser, I'm sorry, the loser was Tampa Bay. Uh, Dallas. Dak was 32 for 36. I mean, let me let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. 
32 for 36. They said that was the second highest completion percentage of all time behind Rich Gannon in 2002 when he went 34 for 38. But Dak went 32 for 36. He hit six different receivers, I believe it was. He threw for 279 yards. He didn't have a touchdown, but he ran one on a nice little quarterback sneak from the shotgun. What a performance by Dak. But I think he was outdone by Elliott. 23 carries for a buck 59. 6.9 yards per carry. What a game by Elliott, man. What a game by Elliott. He might have overdid it by jumping into the Salvation Army of Vaz, but what a game by him, man. What a game by him. But I want to I want to say something to the Dallas fans. I want to say something to the Dallas fans. And um, it was said on the post-game show, and, and I don't know how you take this or where you go with it. You know, Dak was pretty much perfect. Elliott, you couldn't ask for anything better. Tampa Bay had about four or five turnovers. You were at home. You win by six, and Tampa had a chance to win the game in the final minutes. This game, based off of the stats that I, I, I just put out there, somehow this game shouldn't have been this close. I'm not sure how it was that close, because for the most part, Dallas dominated the game. But this game shouldn't have been that close. And a shout-out to the kid, Irving, number 95 on the Cowboys, man. He put some pressure on uh, 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 Jameis Winston, man, on one drive, and it rattled him the rest of the game, man. He gave him a sack on first down, and it rattled him the rest of the game. Big win by Dallas tonight. Good to see them to go back to their winning ways. Uh, I, I believe Jerry Jones had Romo in the bullpen warming up. He was coming in in relief if Dak looked anything short of what we seen early on. But uh, Dak came out there like he felt that, and he got back to what was putting him at rookie of the year and also MVP. And I got to tell you, with this performance ten, uh, last night, He's my number one guy for the MVP. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. He is my number one guy for the MVP. And, and it's more than just uh, his numbers. Guy doesn't get rattled. He, he doesn't wilt under pressure. He, he, can, he has the poise. He has the maturity. Uh, he, 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 he commands the huddle. The guy... He's a natural leader, if you ask me, man. And, and, and for, for me to say this for a rookie, and I'm talking about a rookie, man, it's, it's, it's just simply amazing, man. Kudos to Dak and uh, that Dallas team, man. They're going to be a tough out. Uh, I, I told some buddies tonight, man, uh, last night I should say, yeah, the Super Bowl is going through Dallas and Oakland, man. I think it's Oakland and Dallas in the Super Bowl. Uh, sure, there's some teams that can have something to say about that, but I really think it's going to come down to Oakland and Dallas. What what a game it was. What a game it was. And uh, like I said, Dallas get back to their winning ways. Uh, I do want to address something. Uh, uh, there was a comment uh, by a young lady, Jeannie, who watches the show. She says, I, I'm kind of paraphrasing. She pretty much want to know what can we do, and she's getting a little bit upset and and, and kind of pissed off with some of these high priced quarterbacks that's getting all these money, all this money, and they folding under pressure, not not delivering in the clutch. And you know she's absolutely right, man. I mean, as a Jet fan, to see Ryan Fitzpatrick holding out because he wanted seventeen million dollars a year. And, and I, who knows how many years he wanted it for. He winds up getting 11, man. And he couldn't get out his own way. He could not get out his own way. He was horrible the whole season. 
from the first game against Cincinnati. Just horrible. And then Houston, they bench. They newly acquired this season, offseason, the last pass offseason for this year, uh, uh, Brock Osweiler, four years, $72 million. They benched him in favor of Tom Savage in a must-win game. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, listen, I'm in favor of the players making money, getting money. I'm in favor of it. I'm also in favor of them earning it. If, if the money is made by the, by, by the sport, why should the owners get it all? The players should get their, their share. I'm in favor of it. But I'm in favor of them earning it. And I think some of these players, whether it's football, whether it's uh, 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 basketball or baseball, they're, earn, they're, they're, they're receiving or, or being awarded money that they have not earned. They have not earned. Oswala didn't earn that money. He didn't earn that. He didn't even win the Super Bowl for Denver last year. He played fairly decent in his one year in absence of Peyton Manning. But did he really deserve a four-year, $72 million contract? Did he really earn that? And, how, and, and now he's benched? And we're talking about playoff drives? Just, just horrible, man. Just horrible. And, and that's just to name a few. This, and that's just two that comes to mind. But this is the going rate for a quarterback. And some of them haven't even earned it. Have not even earned it. Think about that for a second. Though. What can be done about it? Should we pay players by the game? Uh, if, if, if you win this game, you get this much. I don't know. But, man. Moving on to the NBA. Uh, not much activity last night, but... Uh, Yesterday, but there's two two games I wanted to talk about. The Clippers went into Washington. What a game that was, 117-110. But Bradley Bill, he led all scorers with 41 points. Listen, Washington is like two games under 500. I don't know if Scott Brooks is the right guy or not, but I know one thing, man. When Washington is rolling, Wall and Bill is one of the top backcourts in the game. Can they play like this every day? Every game? Can it? Bill could be easily a top five two guard in this league. When I think of two guards in this league, Clay Thompson, uh, D. Wade, uh, DeRozan. Who else? Jimmy Butler's playing the three now. Harden's playing the point. Who else? Is it Bradley Bill? I'm sure I'm missing somebody, but is it Bradley Bill? Washington should be a be much better team. Should be a much better team. A much better team. But they get the win. And then how about the Philadelphia and, 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 and uh, Brooklyn game? 107-106, Philadelphia get the win. The reason why I bring that up, with 12.5 seconds, Joel and Bleak hits two crucial free throws and route to his uh, career high at 33 points. You know, this Joel and Bleak guy, man, he, 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 he looks like a special player. You know, Philadelphia, chances are they're going to have two lottery picks. Uh, they're going to have theirs, and they're going to have the Lakers. You know, and... Uh, they got some young assets. Uh, I'm not sure what their plans are with Ben Simmons, what position they're going to play him at. 
I don't know what they do with Okafor. I don't know what they do with New Orleans, uh, uh, no New Orleans, but they're going to have a lot of options come this offseason, man. If they don't make no moves during this season, they're going to have some options because they're probably going to be in a position to land uh, a, a special point guard, whether it's Alonzo, Alonzo Ball or Fox out of uh, Kentucky. And, and point guard is what they need. So they, they're going to be in a good position. But uh, what a game by Joel and pleading in his young career, man. Scored 33 points and, and an exciting win over Brooklyn, man. So kudos to him. You know, kudos. So listen, that's going to do it for my show today, man. I'll see you guys back at it in 24, man. Hey, as I always say, man, peace and blessings, man. Thanks for tuning in. And I appreciate you guys, man. Y'all have a blessed one. Chopping it up with Rob now. Chop, chop. Chop, chop.